Hello friends, welcome back to story time. Today the story is about Magic Tree House Buffalo Before Breakfast. Magic Tree House Buffalo Before Breakfast by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter 7 White Buffalo Women. She has good medicine, said Black Hawk. Annie doesn't have any medicine, Jack said. She just has a way with animals. Black Hawk was silent. He climbed back on his waiting pony. Then he rode down toward Annie. Jack followed. Annie's pony trailed behind. Annie turned to Jack and Black Hawk as they rode up to her. On her face was a look of amazement. You wouldn't believe that what happened, she said. You stopped the stampede, said Black Hawk. But it was not just me, said Annie. What do you mean, asked Jack. I was trying to find Teddy, said Annie. And I got in the way of the buffalo. I couldn't escape. So I held up my hands and shouted, Stop! Then, out of nowhere, a beautiful lady in a white leather dress came to help me. You saw a lady in white? asked Black Hawk. His eyes had grown wide. Yes, said Annie. She held up her hands and the buffalo stopped running. Then she disappeared. Very steady, said Jack. Annie gasped. I don't know. I forgot about him, she said. Teddy, Teddy. Hush, hush. The little dog came bounding out of the grass toward them. Annie scooped him up. Teddy licked her face all over. Where did you go? Annie asked him. Did you see the beautiful lady too? That lady does not live on this earth. Black Hawk said softly. What do you mean? said Annie. You saw the spirit of white buffalo women, he said. What do you mean, spirit? said Jack. You mean like a ghost? Black Hawk turned his pony around. Let us go back, he said. We must tell grandmother. Annie put Teddy in Jack's back. Then she climbed on her pony and they took off. Behind them, the buffalo grazed peacefully on the plains. Chapter 8 Sacred Circle The sun was going down as the three ponies galloped for home. The deep blue sky was streaked with golden red light. Back at the Lakota camp, the circle of teepees glowed in the setting sun. People were gathered around a large fire. Black Hawk led Jack and Annie to the camp. They got off their ponies and went over to the fire. Grandmother rose to greet them. You have been gone a long time, she said. Black Hawk looked at her bravely in the eye. Grandmother, I tried to hunt the buffalo alone, he said. One charged at me, but Jack saved my life. Then Annie and white buffalo women stopped all the other buffalo from a stampede. Let this be a lesson to you, grandmother said sternly. Your pride led you to show off. Showing off made you behave foolishly. Your foolishness frightened a buffalo. He frightened others. One thing always leads to another. Everything is related. 
I'm sorry, said Black Hawk. He hung his head. I have learned. Jack felt sorry for Black Hawk. I make mistakes sometimes too, he said softly. Me too, said Annie. Grandmother looked at Jack and Annie. Buffalo Girl and Rides Like Wind showed great courage today, she said. Jack smiled. He loved his new Lakota name, Rides Like Wind. We welcome you to our family, said Grandmother. The evening shadows spread over the camp. Someone began beating a drum. It sounded like a heartbeat. Come, sit with us in our circle, said Grandmother. They sat with her near the warm fire. A cool breeze blew sparks into the gravy twilight. An old man held a long pipe up to the sky. He pointed it to the east, the south, the west and the north. Then he passed the pipe to the next man in the circle. The man put the pipe to his lips and blew smoke into the golden firelight. Then he passed it on. The smoke from the sacred pipe joins all things to a great spirit. Grandmother said to Jack and Annie, The great spirit? asked Annie. The great spirit is the source of all things in the sacred circle of life, said Grandmother. It is the source of all spirits. What spirits? asked Jack. There are many, said Grandmother. Wind spirits, tree spirits, bird spirits. Sometimes they can be seen, sometimes not. What about the wild buffalo woman, said Jack. Who is she? She is a messenger of the great spirit, said Grandmother. He sent her when the people were starving. She brought the sacred pipe so that her prayers could rise to the great spirit. He answers by sending us the buffalo. What do you think white buffalo women came to me? asked Annie. Sometimes courage can summon help from the beyond, grandmother said. She pulled a brown and white feather from a small buckskin bag. She put the feather on the ground in front of Jack and Annie. This is a gift for you, she said. An eagle's feather for your courage. Arf, arf. Teddy wagged his tail. Jack and Annie smiled at each other. The eagle's feather was their gift from the prairie blue. Their mission was complete. The chanting and drum beats grew louder and louder. Then they stopped. The old man held the pipe up to the sky. All things are related, he said. The pipe smoking ceremony was over. The sky was dark and filled with stars. One by one, people rose from the circle and went to their teepees. Jack put the eagle's feather in his bag and yawned. We better go home now, he said. You must rest first, said Grandmother. You can leave in the dawn. Good plan, said Annie. She was yawning too. They went with Grandmother and Black Hawk to their teepee. Grandmother pointed to two buffalo roofs that lay to one side of the still burning fire. Jack and Annie stretched out on them. Teddy snuggled between them. Grandmother and Black Hawk lay on ropes across from them. Jack watched as the bluish-white smoke rose from the fire. It went up through the tepee hole and into the endless starry sky. 
Jack listened to the wind blowing through the grass. Shh, shh, shh. It's the voice of the great plains, he thought. Then he drifted off to sleep. Thanks for watching the video. Continue the remaining chapters in my next video. Thanks again. Bye.